Let's take a look at an example Ionic app on our localhost and see how it actually works. Now I'm uh, back at Ionic website in getting started section. Ionic actually provides a Node.js based command line tool. To actually use it, first thing we need to do is to download and install Node.js. So simply go to nodejs.org and install it. You don't need to learn Node.js itself, but you can just use it as a command line tool. Then uh, once you install Node.js, run this particular command. So this will install a command line tool called Ionic for you. And then run this command to actually create an example app. Okay, I'll paste with the command. Let's install the my app, Ionic app. Okay, the app is installed now. Let's go into my app folder and let's run a simple Python server to see how it actually works. Okay, uh, our Python server is actually a simple file server. It is simply showing all the files um, that are inside my app project. But the actual app itself is inside www folder. So let's open it. As you can see, this is our example app and it has three tabs. So there is a dashboard tab, there is a friends tab and then an account tab. So the dashboard and account doesn't really do much. It simply shows some text. But the friends tab actually has a list view and also a detail view. So it shows a list of friends and if you click on one of them, it actually shows a detail page of each of those friends. And since this tab has a lot of functionality, we'll be updating this tab to instead talk to Salesforce and load contacts. Okay, let's take a look at the code. Uh, everything we need uh, is actually inside this www folder. Let's take a look at the index.html. This is the main page where everything begins. The modern JavaScript development is all about building single page apps. The idea of single page apps is that instead of you having to load CSS and JavaScript for every single page views and subviews, you simply load them all in a in one main page, typically index.html, and inject just the contents of other pages and views into this main page. This also means that the main page also needs to have a placeholder so that we can swap these views. So now let's take a look at our index.html. So you can see that it is loading a CSS and a bunch of JavaScript files, and there's also a little placeholder here. So this may not be familiar to you, but this is actually a an AngularJS directive and it acts like a placeholder to swap different views. Now let's take a look at some of the different views here. This is the friend detail page and this is the account page and this is the friends list view page and as you can see although it has a .html extension these are actually little templates or fragments that gets injected. Okay at this point we have our main page and a bunch of sub views to inject but we still need some logic that describes which view should be injected when. And this is done in our app.js file here. Without going into much details, all this code does is to tell AngularJS which view to inject when. For example, when the user clicks on friends tab, it simply injects this particular view. This is the view that we were just talking about. And similarly, when the user clicks on the accounts tab, it injects accounts tab view. This is great, but we can't just simply inject a different view. We also need to process that view that we just injected. And that is done in controllers. So as you can see, there is a separate controller for each view. And controllers are just JavaScript functions, which will be called whenever that view is injected. So when the friends tab is clicked, this particular view is injected and this particular controller JavaScript function is called. Similarly, when the user clicks on accounts tab, this Accounts tab view is injected and accounts controller is called. Now, before we look into controllers, if we take a step back, we can see that there are multiple controllers and views. So we still need to somehow configure or tell AngularJS which view slash controllers to choose when. And that is actually done using this little URL parameters here. To understand it better, let's take an example where the user clicks on friends tab. And here we are saying when the user clicks on friends tab, it should go to forward slash friends. But if you go back to our tabs view, you can see that when the friends tab is clicked, it is saying that we should go to forward slash tab forward slash friends URL fragment. Now, if you go back to our app.js, 
although we are just saying forward slash friends, it will still work because friends tab is actually a sub view of tabs view. So what happens is AngularJS first goes to the tabs view and then grabs the URL properties value from the tabs view and then prepends that to the friends URL property. And then it becomes forward slash tab forward slash friends, which actually matches the route that we had specified here. So that's how the whole wiring works. At this point, we now have a single page app, bunch of multiple views, and we now have seen how the routing works. Okay, so it's time to look at the actual controllers themselves. Controllers are again, simple JavaScript functions that act like a middleman between our views and also services that actually perform CRUD operations on the backend. They don't directly make calls to external services, but instead they simply asks or delegates a service to get the job done on its behalf. For example, our friends controller is actually importing a service called friends and asking it to get a list of all friends. Uh, one thing you notice, controller doesn't really know or care how the friend service is actually getting this, the list of items, but it just asks it and assumes that friends controller is going to do some magic and get the job done. Okay, it's time to look at services. Services are also JavaScript functions that are used to hide or encapsulate complexities like doing CRUD operations. They usually have some private functions and private variables that they don't expose and also a bunch of functions they actually expose. Uh, in our example app, we have a private object called friends that happens to have hard-coded values and also it exposes two functions. One is called all and the other one is called get. And our controller, once it imports or injects the friend service, it can only call the all or the get functions from this service. One last thing I would like to talk about is what happens when the service actually returns the result. So controller asks friend service to return all the friends items and service happens to return four items back. But then AngularJS also provides two-way binding to the views as well. So once it notices that the scope.friends property's value changes from zero to four items, and it goes back to the view and it notices that there is an ng repeat directive, which is similar to Apex components and creates a list with four items. I know it's a lot to take in. So just to give you a better idea, I've put some breakpoints in this app to show you how it works. So let me refresh this app. First thing it does is, as you can see, it is registering all the routes. And one thing to notice here is that it's also setting the dashboard tab as the default tab. Uh, let's click on the friends tab. And as you can see, it's now calling the friends controller, which is in turn calling friends service. So let's continue. Then it's calling the friend services uh, all function. And when the result comes back, it's actually displaying the list of items here. So the same thing goes for the subviews. Uh, I'm gonna click on one of the items here. And again, it is now calling the friends detail controller and it is passing in the friend ID through the state param. So this is, this is how you can pass parameters from one uh, view to another view. And again, the great function of our friend service is going to return the friends whose ID is zero. And once the return comes back, the controller is going to change the name of this detail view to that person's name. So as you can see, AngularJS provides structure and two-way binding to help divide up your apps into modules and build really large apps with very little JavaScript of your own. And since Ionic is built on top of Angular, you can now build complex JavaScript apps that not only look beautiful on the outside, but also on the inside.